Yeah, that's a real stab. <laughs> right? Alrighty, guys, welcome to Animate with Everyone's Animator. I am Everyone's Animator. This is going to be a full course journey where I'll be taking us on how to animate from start to finish using Adobe Animate. So if you are a beginner who is looking to start a career in animation, this is the right course for you. I'll be taking us uh, step by step on um, creating a character, rigging your character, lip syncing all the way down to um, exporting your final and first animation project. So I hope you stick around with me throughout the whole journey. Are you excited? Because I am. So enough of all the talk, let's get to it. Okay guys, this is going to be um, a quick overview of Adobe Animate workspace and um, um, navigating the interface. So right on my screen right now is um, the first thing you might come across if you open up Animate for the first time. Down here I have uh, my recent project files but for you, you might not have anything here, um, nothing to bother about. So. Just to start off with animate, it's pretty much straight. You can come here to create new document or open. That is if you have something you've been working on before. But for the case of this tutorial, let's go to create new. You can also come to file and new. But let's just click on create new anyway. So once you click that, there will be a small box that will pop up, which is going to be asking you for further um, settings on how you want your project file to be not to worry too much about the rest of the options on like the social game education ads webs and advanced let's just focus on character animation because that is why we are here so um click on the full hd which is 19 20 by 20 and then confirm if the frame rate is up to what you want um for me the standard frame rate i work with is 30 frame per second so we can just leave it at that and then for the platform type action script 3.0 is the best for animation then you click create after you click on create this is the um, workspace that will welcome you once again what you might be having in your own end might be different to what i'm having right now because i have been able to you know um, customize my workspace to suit what i want but um it's not a problem if you want to have something like this as well you can always just um drag out any panel and put it anywhere you want it to be you can always just drag it out and put it where you want to be but for me i prefer my timeline to be um below so i can walk um over it and then i have my tools on the right hand probably because you know i'm right-handed so i prefer every other thing i need to be on my right hand instead of it being on the left so i can easily navigate and also i can have enough um working room for my main animation from the top we have the menus which um, consist of the file edit all the way to help this is where you can always drop down options to import stuff or export to save um, to add further editing to any object you select on your workspace and this white box right here represents your camera anything you draw on the camera will show but any other thing you draw outside the camera will not show so to say that if you have anything, um, any object or a drawing that overlaps in between these two, just bear in mind that what the camera will see is what's around in this area, but not this area. Down here, like I mentioned before, is my timeline. So timeline is just basically where the magic happens, where I have my new layer and I can create frames. You know, I can right click on my frames, create new frames. Then I can draw more things on my keyframes. I can come here and draw things. I can come back here and draw another thing. You know, um, toggle back and forth to see what it is. I can come here to delete, create folder, and I have my onion skin in order to see your previous and your next drawing. Also, the play button, the rewind button, the next frame, etc. All these things are just the timeline to help you um, further animate what you're working on. And on my right hand is where I have the tools. Which is pretty much every necessary things you need to work with your brush to your move to your text to um your shape to even your paint bucket and i have some other panels that i've been able to uh, minimize here which is pretty much your properties where you can have further settings to a particular tool you select if i select the rectangular tool for instance i can easily add a um, few adjustments to it on like the bro um, the stroke size uh, or maybe the style size even the brush i can change the size and also how it smooths corresponding to whatever it is you want to do so and then this floating panel is my color which is pretty much self-explanatory um this is where 
I can change my color to whatever it is I want then I draw on my page and I draw on my page looking further more into the most important tool you'll be working with which is brush tool let's look at um, few effects that the brush tool have or few um, settings that you can do with your brush tool if I draw something let's say I draw a circle and then I'm trying to uh, paint this let me just paint this over let me fill it then let's say I'm trying to draw with another color behind this brush because normally if you draw with your brush tool if you draw on a shape it goes over the previous drawing there are further um, settings you can do to um, affect this so case in point let me undo this real quick so you can come down to where you have your two panel come down to where you have this brush mode so brush mode uh, basically just give you options to you know paint fill only paint behind paint selection or paint inside let's test out what paint behind does so if you click on paint behind now we try to draw again over the blue you see it will go all the way to the back same thing happens if you select the blue and then go to paint selection so then we draw something over our selection and then we leave you will notice that immediately whatever it is we draw is um it, it stays within that blue shape so these are these are further you know it goes on like that we have paint inside we have um, um paint fill only so you can test out uh, most of all these brush tools to see what they do just like i mentioned at the beginning this is gonna be an overview of the workspace so i'm not really gonna be touching too much about on on um, most of all the options and all the colors and all the tools but while we go on in the course we will be able to tackle most of all these tools to know what they do and then to understand them better most importantly the timeline also on the side um just in case you are someone that doesn't really like a white um background for your camera you know in case of your eyes or whatever it may be i for one i don't like working with white color so to change this color you can come to your properties panel I come down to stage where you see this white box so once you click that you can select any color you want as you can see so what I work with is I work with we I work with ash color so this way I'm able to you know keep my eyes safe while I'm working on a particular project but bear in mind this color does not come out on the final production this is like a transparent um, background so whatever the color we select here it doesn't affect the final production the, the camera is not going to be seeing this if you want a background where the camera is going to be seen just select your rectangle and select the color and then fill over the camera so now this is what the camera will see the camera won't be seeing the ash color we created before this in a case you're looking for a particular panel on your workspace let's say maybe the color or the properties panel or anything even the timeline whatever it is that it is on your workspace if you're looking for any come up here to window and then scroll down you can see these are all the tabs and the panels that are available to pop up on your workspace so now you see i have my edit bar checked timeline checked i have my tools checked properties panel which is was hidden here you can check it out just in case you're looking for your color as well you can come down here you see color align to so anything that is here is what you can have access to to pop out on your workspace so if you are able to um rearrange your workspace to your liking you can always save this workspace just in case you don't want to lose it or maybe just to have it as a customized workspace how do you do that come up here to your top right angle where we have workspace um, icon click on that you see where we have this new workspace just select that and type in the name of your new workspace so let's call this my new workspace so now it has been saved as my new workspace so now that I've been able to touch um, the basic things you can you know need in Adobe Anime, it's pretty much as easy as that. Let's go straight to rough sketching the character that I'll be using for this particular course. So just to let us know, this is not going to be a character designing tutorial. You know, I'm not going to be teaching us on how to create a character, the modules and understanding how to put shapes together or designing your own unique character design. I'm just showing us how to animate. So we'll be using a random character design just to do this and I'll be going straight to roughing it out. And so we'll be using that as a final character design for our animation. 
as you can see right now i'm just pretty much working on um one frame creating the rough as loose as possible Be and while i'm creating it i'm keeping in mind um simplicity because of this tutorial you know for beginners level also i'm i'm thinking of how to rig it better you know you might want to be avoiding too much of information on your characters like too much of clothes um, too much of um, accessories and stuff so i'm keeping it as loose as possible as simple as possible bear in mind this is beginners level that is why i'm trying to do this this way i'll be making this project file available for us so we can always walk around the project file to see how i was able to create the rough sketch or even till the final animation you can have access to navigate around to see my timeline my workspace and how i was able to put together the whole body part so you can see while i was um, creating the character design i was keeping in focus how the height is gonna be how fat i want him to be but there's a lot of back and forth and that's because i didn't really have um an initial plan on how i want my character to be so i was just thinking on the go so that's why i was having a lot of issues here and there and then um just you know have fun and enjoy your rough sketch so um yeah <laughs> pretty much that's what it is now that we have our complete rough sketch ready in the next tutorial we'll be going further to um, rigging this character and that is where we'll ink out the features and the body parts giving it the right color the right um, stroke we want it to have and then separating the body parts for it to be ready for animation so if you have any questions you want me to tackle or if there's any part that you are not clear with do let me know in the comment section below and i'll be able to tackle them um and see if we can touch on them in the next tutorial and also the project file will be made available for um for everyone who needs to also have this in the archive to see how the things is done in real time Alrighty guys, that is all I have for today's class. Um, do make sure to subscribe to my channel and um, also turn on the notification button so that you get notified when the next video drops. And until next time, keep being a dazzling artist.